This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from opentuition.com. All right, this is the second and the last lecture on Chapter 10, Investment Grace Under Uncertainty. In the previous lecture, I uh, went through sensitivity analysis and then a quick mention of simulation. Uh, the third uh, exercise, if you like, is something called expected values. Uh, which you should, in fact, be aware of from paper F5, uh, which I know not all of you will have perhaps taken or you may have forgotten it. But it is paper F5, to be honest. But anyway, we will check. Uh, but look at the example. Diger is considering launching a new product. It'll need an additional capital investment of 200000 the selling price of the product will be $10 a unit. And Diger has ascertained that the probability of a demand of 50,000 units a year is 0.5, or 50% chance. There's a probability at uh, 0.4, it'll be 20% higher. At 10% probability, it'll be 20% lower. We expect a contribution of 50%. We expect fixed overheads to increase by 140,000 a year. The time horizon is four years. We're going to sell at the end of four years for 50,000. The cost of capital is 20%. Well, our problem here is slightly certain. Slightly certain. Slightly different. It's the demand. Because Diger's not certain of the demand, but instead of the demand simply being uncertain, you know, it could in theory be anything, she's found that the demand will either be 50,000 a year, or it'll be 20% higher. Well, 20% higher, 20% of 50 is 10, so it might be 60,000. Or it'll be 20% lower, or 20% of 50 again is 10, uh, 10,000 lower is 40. So this is rather different um, in that we know the demand will be one of those three, but it could be any one of those three. However, we do know the probability of it being 50,000 is 0.5, of it being higher, uh, the probability is 0.4, uh, and of it being lower, the probability is 0.1. So 50% chance, 40% chance, 10% chance, total obviously 100. Now I shouldn't need to say much about this because there was a lot of this in F5, but in that sort of situation where it's not so much uncertain, could be anything, it's one of those three with those probabilities, then all we can do is base our decision on the average demand, or what we call the expected demand. It's a weighted average. We multiply by the probabilities and add up. And so, multiplying by the probabilities and add up gives us 25, 49, 53,000. That's the weighted average, or what we call the expected value here, the expected demand. And having done that, we then carry on like any normal uh, net present value question but based on demand of 53,000 units a year. And so let's set it up and do it. There'll be uh, additional investment of 200, so at times zero, we've got the cost of 200,000. Uh, it's going to last four years, so from one to four, we've got our contribution which, remember, I reminded you in the uh, last lecture that contribution 
is the revenue less the variable costs. And so the contribution is 50% of the revenue. And how much revenue a year? It's 53,000 units at revenue of $10 each. So the revenue, uh, 530,000 a year, if the contribution is 50%, it means it's 50% of the revenue. So the contribution... Two sixty-five thousand a year for four years. Uh, what else? Oh, fixed overheads are going to increase, so there are incremental overheads. If they're extra incremental, they're relevant. Uh, that's hundred and forty thousand a year. Uh, and finally, there's a scrap value in four years' time of 50,000. It's just straight discounting now. So the present value at 20% won't take me a moment. The annuity factor for, it won't take me a moment, I can find my tables, sorry, sorry. The annuity factor for four years at 20% is... 2.589, so the present value is 265,000 times 2.589, 686085, uh, and the fixed overhead 140,000 times 2.589, 362,460. And finally, the scrap proceeds, the ordinary present value uh, tables, 20 years, uh, sorry, four years at 20%, the factor is 0.482. And so the present value, 24,100. Was it 50,000 or five? It was 50. And so finally, the net present value, Nothing new here, I mean, um, once we got to this stage, but still I will finish it. 686085 plus 24100 minus 362460 minus 200,000. Uh, 147725, it's positive, we accept. <coughs> there is the expected NPV. Uh, and that's what to be expected in the exam. If there is any writing about it, do appreciate, and again it's basically paper F5 written, do appreciate that the one problem here is demand isn't actually going to be 53,000 at all. Dyke has found it will either be 50,000 or it'll be 60,000 or It'll be a 40,000. It'll be one of those three. If it turns out to be 50,000, things aren't going to be quite as good as this. We've assumed 53. If it turns out to be 60,000, things are a lot better. If it turns out to be only 40,000, things again are worse. Perhaps simulation would have been better, trying all the possibilities. But unexpected values, when there are probabilities given like this, we simply replace with the expected, the weighted average. Uh, part B is really your exercise. I'm not going to do this on the screen. I really shouldn't need. Same question, but it says assume the demand is certain at 50,000 uh, per annum. What's the MPV if the fixed overheads are uncertain? And could be any one of those four. And so you're going to do this, not me. There's an answer at the back. But the, the, this time the demand, we assume, is certain at 50,000. 
So that will obviously be different. However, the fixed overheads, instead of them being 140, it's going to be the expected value. So it shouldn't take you many seconds. Multiply by the probabilities and add up. Whatever answer you get, that is what you'll use for fixed overheads, and then we carry on as normal. Okay, so I mean, that's a little way uh, the examiner can make a question a bit longer. He can give you a full question, tax, inflation, everything. But then for one of the flows, have you can't get the expected value, but once you've got it, then it's back to a normal question. All right, uh, the last um, thing mentioned in this chapter, you can see for yourself, is something called the risk adjusted discount rate. And you see there are no numbers there. You can read it yourself, but um, the reason there's not too much need is this. The idea is that the more uncertain a project is, the flows rather, the more uncertain the flows are, the more risk we're taking by going ahead. And he says, OK, if it is more risky, let's discount the flows at a higher discount rate. Cost of capital may be just 10%, discount 10%. But if the project is very risky, if instead of discounting at 10, I discount it at 15, think about it. It means in order for it to be worthwhile going ahead, to be positive, the project is going to have to give us higher expected flows. Now, I may or may not make sense. The reason I'm not going to say more, though, is that in fact, when we come to look at cost of capital, how we calculate the rate at which we discount things, there's a big topic called capital asset pricing model. Uh, which is effectively working at a discount rate based on the level of risk. So um, there's a whole chapter on that later. It's part of calculating cost of capital. It's terribly important. But I'll explain everything in it, the relevance of it and so on, uh, when we come to that chapter as part of cost of capital. So for the moment, by all means, read what's on that page. But I'm not too worried. We'll come back to it later. So there we are. We've finished that part of the syllabus. Uh, investment appraisal. The next lectures we can carry on with the next part.